Welcome to Gentle Restorative. My name is Sandra. And um, if you've got some props nearby, I would gather them in. Um, in a moment, after we set our intention, what we'll be starting with is the blanket and two blocks. However, if you have more blankets around you, um, you might want to replace the blocks with three blankets. Just might be a little more compassionate, but grab something. If you have no props, it's, the pose will still work just as well for you. So having said all that, take a deep breath in. Let it go. Take the arms all the way up. Exhale the hands to the heart in prayer pose. And let's pause here to set our intention. And then stay right here, eyes closed. I'm gonna ask you a really strange question. I want you to, um, well, I'm gonna ask the question in two ways. What do you feel you might be too old to start? Or what do you feel you're too young to start? Okay, assuming you have those answers, go ahead and release the arms. Inhale the shoulders up, exhale back and down. Perfect, okay. So what I did with my blanket, I'm gonna um, unroll it. It's kind of in a long rectangle. Um, all I'm gonna do is just toss the end closest to me away and you just might roll it up. I have a tail hanging out over here on the far end that is not essential. I don't know why. I think because it looks probably cooler. I'm not sure, um, but it won't be necessary. Now, I do need my two blocks. Um, like I said, if you have blankets to replace one or both blocks, this probably feel a little bit better. Um, and of course, you don't have to use any props to do this whatsoever. So this is what I need you to do. Go ahead and come on over into table facing your blanket. That roll, that's where my forehead's going to rest. So we're coming into supported gecko, um, but we're going to need to do this slowly. As I come down, right leg's going out. We're starting on the right side. So get down onto that left hip. Block number one or blanket uh, number two, I guess. This is going to go kind of underneath the thigh and hip. So wherever that's most comfortable for you, this, the other block is going under the knee. Got it? Okay. Now, we aren't turning our head in gecko like we usually do. Foreheads going on the blanket. So arms, both of them in scarecrow. Come on down slowly. Make sure your face is not in the blanket. I want you to be able to breathe. I can't see you. So if you start to turn blue, um, I won't notice. Ah, now take a deep breath here. Let it go. And settle in. Now, you guys know me well enough. If some part of the body is not happy about this, you can go ahead and make a change. So if there's issues with the shoulders and they feel like they're holding too much weight here, um, what you could do is bring, you know, one shoulder back, hopefully there's only one shoulder bothering you. If that throws off your balance, okay, then go ahead and turn your head away from the arm that you just brought behind you. If it's the blocks you don't like, which I can kind of understand, you can move them if you really don't like that. This is why I said a blanket might feel better. But we're gonna hang out here in this hip opening pose. The eyes gently shut, the body softening. Each exhale, let the body get heavier. Feel that right leg's reliance on the props underneath to hold it in place. And then while I've got you right where I want you, I didn't mean that. I meant while I've got you in a fabulously restorative pose, I asked you a couple of questions, right? And so the first question was, what do you think you're too old to start? And you know, that question was directed at 
some of us who are a little older. And then I asked, what do you think you're too young to start? And that was directed really toward um, anyone watching who is a lot younger. And what I wanna get at is the answer for both is the same. So let's back up. So one of my yoga students uh, said she was starting yoga teacher training. And you know, the, the fabulous thing about yoga teacher training is you don't have to teach yoga once you're done. You learn so much more. I would say you learn so much more about the poses and Sanskrit, of course, and yoga and all that. But what you really learn so much more about is yourself. Um, and so I know it's going to be an amazing path, no matter what she chooses to do with it. But I loved her, her text to me, which said, I'll be almost, well, I, I didn't ask permission to tell the age. I asked permission to tell the story. So let's just say a little bit older. I'll be a little bit older in September, she wrote, when um, teacher training is over, but I'm going to be that age anyway in September, right? Even if I don't take that class. And that really put me in a pause moment where I'm like, wow, yes, that is it. That's the phrase. That's the way to put it. So I'm not too old because I'm going to be that age anyway. So what the hell does it matter what I'm doing? And if you're like, I don't know, 20, 21, 22, and you're thinking you're too young to start something, or perhaps you've already got an, um, a college degree, but it's not what you want to do, but you're thinking you shouldn't start over, there's no time like the present. You're never too old. You're never too young. And I found some other great quotes for you that I'm going to share with you as we meander through our sequence. But first, I do want to help you get out of this pose and switch to the other side. So hang on. Let me get down there with you. All right, give me another deep inhale. Cleansing exhale. So what you might want to do first is roll into that left hip so you can straighten out the right leg. From here, let's just slide the forearms back and we'll kind of work our way into Sphinx. And if your um, blanket's in your way, of course you can move it temporarily. Remember the forearms are parallel. So traction forward, get some lift here. Feel the tops of the feet pushing down into the, the mat. Ah, fabulous. All right, come on down. Probably easiest if you come back up towards table first so we can move our props to the other side. And then when you're ready, come on down. Let's get that left leg perched up on the blocks. And then just settle into your space. So Lori's story made me think of, um, well, if you've read my book, you've already, you already know this story. And if you've been in my yoga classes, you also have already heard this story. But what it made me think of was, uh, when I used to teach at a health club and uh, I was teaching headstand and there was a woman in the class who was like, yeah, yeah, no, I'm not doing headstand. And so I walked up to her and I said, you know, kind of, is there a reason why? Because I really just wanted to discern if there was a physical reason why she shouldn't do it or if she was scared to do it. And it turns out, well, her response to me was, um, I can't do headstand. I've never done one before. And I'm, I'm 40. She was 40 or 41. I can't remember. Um, and I looked at her and I go, that's perfect. I'm the same age as you are. And so we got her into that headstand and she was so elated and excited. And she came down and she yelled at the class. Did you guys see me? And of course we saw her because it was, it was a moment, right? And that's what uh, the story reminded me of. And it's so fabulous when we we kind of just do put our age aside and what we think is expected of us and just do what we need to do. All right, follow those exhales, sink deeper into your pose. I want you to feel that hip opener. So just to get you super excited, this theme got me thinking about, well, not teaching headstand uh, when I can't be in person with all of you and make sure that you're safe and I can catch you. Um, 
So I thought, what other pose <laughs> do people not thoroughly enjoy? Now, I want you to be excited because we're going to make sure it's super supported. And hopefully, everything will be well, go well, right? If it doesn't go well, nothing's going to happen to you. You might need somebody to you might need to call to someone in the house to pull you out of it, but I don't think that's going to happen either. You know, I'm kidding, right? Okay. No, I do really have a good pose for you. We've not done it before. We'll see what you think. You can uh, tell me in the comments to the video. All right. Give me a deep inhale. Loud exhale. Kind of uh, tip into that right hip so you can straighten out the left leg behind you. And then let's get those forearms underneath us again. Find Sphinx. Remember to, once you plant the forearms, pull the arms back towards you. They're not actually moving on the mat, but that'll allow the heart to move forward. And then you get that, that height. So deep breath in. Nice exhale. I really don't know what that meant. Like your exhale is going to be mean. How about peaceful instead of nice, peaceful exhale. And then go ahead and make your way up into table. Find your cat cow, link it with your breath, not mine. And when you're ready to come back to table, let's pause there, wait for everyone to catch up. And then we're gonna take this to downward facing dog, walk it out a little bit. A little side note about downward facing dog. Um, if you have any sciatic issues, this is the only fold that you should be doing to try to work that out no standing folds, no seated folds, but this one would be good. Okay, go ahead, bring the knees back down to the earth. Sit back for a second. We need um, the strap, a strap. And of course, again, if you don't have one, don't worry about it. And then let's go ahead and lay back. I'm gonna push my blanket out of the way. Um, I'm not concerned if you are still using yours, it'll be okay. All right, so go ahead and hug the right knee in. That left leg, I want it to, I want you to take the left foot kind of over behind the right glute and then let the knee fall open to the ground, okay? So the left leg is bent and the outer side of the leg is towards the earth. Now, notice I didn't say it's on the earth. So depending on where that leg ended up, you might need one of your blocks to put underneath that left leg. And then we're just hugging that right knee in. Now let's keep hanging on to that right knee with the right hand. Take the left hand, reach down, rest it on that inner left thigh, and we're gonna use the hands to push and pull in opposite directions. So right hand's pulling, left hand gently pushing. Gently, you'll know when to stop. And then go ahead Release that, hug both knees into the heart, rock it out. Okay, set the right foot down on the mat, hug the left knee in, and then wiggle that right foot over towards 
the left glute, drop that knee open, and you might again take a prop and put it underneath that right knee. Okay, left hand is pulling the left knee in, right hand moves to the inner right thigh and gently pushes away from you. Deepen the breath. And then very gently hug the knees back in and rock it out from side to side. Okay, go ahead and set both feet back down on the mat. Look around for that strap. And of course, if you don't have it, one, don't worry about it. Okay, I'm gonna put the strap behind my right thigh. And then just hang on to it with your right hand. Go ahead and straighten out the left leg. I'm gonna pull that right leg in just by using the strap. And then I'm going to switch the strap into my left hand open the right arm straight out from your shoulder. We're taking our supine twist. So right knee to the left, and I'm just using my left hand to hold that strap so I can draw that leg in, maybe a little closer than it normally would be if we weren't using the prop. And when you're comfortable, close your eyes. So I'll tell you, I think one of the things that resonated with me about Lori's comment is that while I'm in my working on my master's and I'm 52, I'm definitely the oldest person in my classes. You know, some of the kids and their kids, right, are almost half my age. And um, even the closest to my age I can think of is still three years younger. So I constantly do have, I shouldn't say constantly, I often do have a thought about that, um, you know, and starting something different so late in life. But when Lori texted me that, I thought, well, gosh, darn it, you know, I'm going to be 52 or 53, no matter what the heck I'm doing. So why not? What does it matter? And so to Lori, I thank you for that. I found a quote that was very similar. It comes from uh, Edith Ava Eager from a book called The Choice, Embrace the, em em sorry, Embrace the Possible. And the quote is, by the time I would finish school, I'll be 50. He smiled. You're going to be 50 anyhow. So adopt this as your new mantra. I think this is fabulous. And um, just think of all the things that having that in the forefront of your mind will no longer stop you from doing or starting or thinking is even possible. All right, let's see, I've left you in a twist. So let's go ahead and return to your backs. Let's keep that strap behind the right thigh for a moment. I moved the strap into my right hand and stretch that right leg up to the ceiling. Let's flex both feet. And then I really want you to get a good grip on that strap. Hang on tight. Can you rely on the arm to hold the leg in place? So stop the leg from working here. I don't want to completely let it soften because then the knee is going to bend. And, but I have released my leg's weight into the strap and I'm hanging onto that strap for dear life to keep the leg there. Perfect. All right, inhale. Exhale, go ahead and bend that right leg. Ah, perfect. And we're going to get rid of that strap from behind the right leg, plant both feet, and let's put that strap behind the left thigh. All right, go ahead and pull on the strap so you can pull the left leg in, straighten out the right leg. 
Take the strap in the um, right hand, open the left arm straight out from the shoulder, and then left knee comes across the body to the right in a fabulous twist. feel like I should back up and say yeah. to any of my classmates who I just called kids, it's because you're my kid's age. <laughs> it is no disrespect to you at all. All right, deep in the breath here. And then we'll slowly return to the back. Move the strap into the left hand and stretch the left leg up to the ceiling, flexing both feet. And then get a firm grip on the strap with the left hand, really tight and then let go of the weight of the left leg. Slow inhale. Exhale, bend the left knee, set the strap aside and hug both legs in. And then from here, you can either roll to a side in a fetal position, pause there and come back to a seated position, or if you would rather, you can just rock your way up. So I'll give you a moment if you chose the first option. When you're ready, we're gonna stretch both legs out in front of us and um, do a variation of Dandasana. So instead of having the hands right by the hips and sitting up tall 90 degrees at the hips, let's take the hands a little further back, fingers pointed in, and then bend into the elbows. And when you're ready to inhale, I want you to lift through the heart, straightening out the arms, letting the head gently tip back. Now, hold right here and breathe. When you get to an exhale, bring the head back up, soften the spine. We'll push our way back up fully and then we're gonna take a forward fold here, but remember what I said about sciatic. So if you have issues with that, just stay right here, don't take the fold. Otherwise, you can come straight down or bend the knees um, if everything's feeling a little tight this morning. Staying there for a few more breaths. I'll give you another quote while you're there. Okay, so this is um, by, <clears throat> by Rochelle Goodrich from a book called Making Wishes, Quotes, 
thoughts and a little poetry for every day of the year. And the quote is, who told you it was too late? And more importantly, why did you choose to believe them? Hmm. What does that apply to in your world? Go ahead and make your way back up. Shake out the legs a little bit. All right, so following that quote, we're gonna do our, uh, our new fun pose. So I'm gonna need you on your knees for a moment. We need um, everything except for the strap. If you had an extra blanket nearby, I bet it would be very helpful, but if you don't, don't worry about it. You trust me, right? Okay, so the two blocks are going in the middle of my mat, lowest height. Um, actually, I'm gonna move mine just a teeny bit closer. And then let's grab the block. Hold on, I wanna reconsider one thing. I think let's do medium height. I was worried the blocks would tip over, but I think we're gonna be okay. Medium height, they're about a foot apart. I don't want them at this, you know, extreme ends of my um, bolster because then the bolster is gonna sag in the middle. So let's go medium height on the blocks. And I want you to come up and push on this and make sure it's gonna stay. Okay, now, I have, if you have one blanket, I have two different options for you. You might want this blanket behind the bolster under your knees because one knee is gonna be back here. However, having said that, you might need extra height. <laughs> I like keeping you, <laughs> you just keep keeping you hanging there. Uh, you might need extra height up on top of that bolster. So yeah, I guess I should probably <laughs> show you where we're headed now. Don't forget, this is because I thought it'd be clever to stick with the theme and do a pose that we might think we can't do or we're too old to do or whatever the excuse is, right? But we need to have it supported. So Hanumanasana is, I hate to say this, don't, don't go anywhere, is splits, supported splits we're doing, yeah? And so what it would look like is, I'm gonna come up uh, on my knees, I'm staying on my left knee. This right leg has gotta come over. So however you can get it there. Now, I don't want you to worry about this pose because you could stay right here. We could stay here in more of a supported half warrior A. If you stay here though, I want you to have something else you could put underneath that um, right thigh to support it. So you can kind of see what I meant about the blanket now underneath the left knee. So if you get here and you are fine, all you need to do is just stretch out just a little to get that right thigh down on the bolster, okay? So if you're saying in your head to me and I'm hearing you that, yeah, my leg's not touching the bolster, that's where we need the blanket, right? We need to make this taller. Oh, get that underneath me, there we go. So this doesn't have to be a crazy pose. And guess what? You're doing a version of splits. How about that? Go ahead and applaud yourself unless you can't let go of the bolster right now, don't fall over. So wherever you're at, you're lifting the heart, you're smiling, and you're pretty darn impressed with yourself. Give me a couple of deep breaths. Truly, you really should feel like the props underneath you are what's holding you up. All right, so how are we getting out of this? Get your hands on that bolster, lean forward so you can slide the right foot back in. And you might wanna then just kind of push off a little bit. You can either pull the right foot towards you or switch the right hand to the inside and get that leg just to come around. Perfect. Now, lucky for you, you have another side. So. Let's get settled into the right knee and let's do the same thing. Let's get the left leg over. And of course you can come around if that's easier. And then just slowly take your, your, what was I even gonna say? Slowly make your way into this pose. You need that left thigh to be touching a prop. That's where the support is, right? So build up your blanket if you need it there. 
You're going to lift the heart. Again, you're smiling. You're not throwing things at the camera. And um, yeah, you're breathing. All good, as good as can be. Take a deep breath in, let it go. And then plant the hands, lean forward, get some weight in the hands so that you can slide, oh, my mat came with me, slide that left foot in. And then however it's easiest for you to get out of this pose, you can pat yourself on the back. And now of course I reward you, right? Something super restorative, so. You're going to take one of those blocks, put it at the far end of your mat at its lowest height, prop your bolster up. You can set the other block aside. And then don't worry about which way you're facing. Um, you don't need to see anything at the moment. I'll just tell you what we're doing. Flip over onto your stomach. Your legs are going up the bolster. So however that's easiest for you, you can use your blanket if you want to. And of course, if you feel like you can't keep your legs on the bolster, they want to keep sliding off. You could cross one ankle over the other. Um, you know, if you're really struggling with that, you can come back out of this pose and use your strap, put a loop in it, get it around the feet. That's going to be a little harder to get up in this pose, but you can do it. I know you can. So turning your head to one side, Whichever one you prefer at the moment, I'll have you switch in a few minutes. Um, just close your eyes. Sorry, if you can hear my dog whining upstairs, she's um, wanting to be down here. She doesn't like, well, she likes to play in the snow, but she's not happy that she's not in the basement because of the snow. I should have let her come to yoga. So Edith Eager, again, from the book, The Choice wrote, it's the first time I see that we have a choice to pay attention to what we've lost or pay attention to what we still have. And so um, obviously we choose the positive um, intention in that quote. So paying attention to what we still have and what we still have is a whole lot of time and a whole lot of energy and a whole lot of um, opportunities to learn and we can do whatever we put our mind to, right? So if you're feeling, um, well, I guess uh, if you're resonating with this theme while you're in your restorative pose, start thinking about um, something that you might wanna try this week. Let's say this week, it's totally different for you. And if you're really tired, you might not wanna think right now and you just stay in your pose and veg out, which is totally fair.
Let's go ahead and turn your head to the other side. And then probably the easiest way to get back out of that pose is to separate the legs, let them come down on either side of that bolster. And then maybe push yourself up into kind of table to get out of that or however you think is best. We're coming back to a seated pose. So take your time. Okay, so from here, I want you to grab your strap. Go ahead and put a loop in it. All right, it's gonna be a really small loop. And I'm going to use that to catch my right foot. I'm opening that right leg off to the side. I'm keeping that left foot tucked in, but go ahead and let that left knee open out a little bit. Okay, so I want to reach over with my left hand to grab that strap and then just kind of slide my hand through, but I've got some tension on that. Right hand is resting on the right shin. Sit up tall. Now, excuse me, let that strap run through your finger so you can stretch this left arm all the way up. Sit up taller. All right, right foot's flexed. Now we have some options here. What I want to start with is take that left arm and let that arm pull behind you a little bit. So you see I'm rotating my left shoulder back. I'm using my right hand as leverage. Heart's rotating to the left. The arm has come behind my head just a little bit. And I've got really good tension here on the strap between my foot and my hand. So if you need to choke up, you can. If you need to lengthen out, you can. Give me a deep breath. Sit up taller. You can see if you can rotate any further behind you. You're being very careful, right? You're listening to your body. Nice. Okay. Twist to come back to center. I still have that left arm up above me, but now I want to side bend to the right, but what's going to happen? Well, my strap's going to get really loose, isn't it? So 
You could reach over with the right hand and grab the tail of your strap if you want to. That's one way to do it. I don't really think that's the easiest, but that would be one way. If you want to come into your side bend and pull the strap, I'm just going to kind of feed the strap for my other hand, work my way into my side bend. And then if you want to tighten up on the strap, so the arm is more, I need the tail of this behind me. So the arm is more overhead, you can. If you kind of liked having that arm straight up, you could stay there. So play around. I just want to make sure that you're keeping the spine elongated. We're not rounding forward, right? Creating an arch in the opposite direction with the back. We're in the same plane with the shoulders, the low back, the hips. You can do whatever you want to with that top arm. Good, inhale, exhale, and then slowly make your way back up. Perfect, I'm just dropping that left arm. I'm just gonna close my eyes and be right here for a moment. You can kind of feel the stretch just seeping out of the left side rows, can't you? Okay, let's go ahead and switch sides. So we need to get the strap off the right foot, switch it over to the left. When you're ready, you'll have that right foot tucked in front of you, open out that right knee a little bit. All good? All right, go ahead and start threading the strap through the right hand, taking that arm all the way up, sit up tall. Begin to use leverage against the left leg with the left hand, pull the right shoulder back, turn the heart and hold it right here. Don't hold the breath. And then sit up taller. And if you want to, you can see if you can open that behind you just a little bit more. And then slowly come back to center. Now remember, we're taking the side bend to the left. So however you want that to work with your strap and the arm up above you, just start to make your way there. And then inhale to come back up, drop the strap, close your eyes, couple of deep breaths. And then when you're ready, you can open your eyes, slide that strap off of the left foot. We're bringing the legs in to uh, Gomukhasana, cow face. So left leg on the bottom, knee pointing forward. Do your best to line up the legs. A prop between the knees will be helpful if there's a big gap. Um, if you don't want to do this, you don't actually have to. We're coming into a fold over the legs. So if you don't want to do that, then put the right leg in front of easy pose and we'll come forward here, yeah? All right, so whatever works for you. When you're ready though, before you fold, you're sitting up, right? 
and then hinging forward into your fold. So you can take the arms out to the side. You could reach them forward. And then walk your way back up. If you're in cow face, switch to the left legs on top. If you're in easy pose, switch to the left leg is in front. And when you're ready, you'll lengthen and gently fold forward. So C.S. Lewis wrote, you're never too old to set another goal or to dream a new dream. And so perhaps while you're in Shavasana, you set the intention, not to think about that, but to maybe let a new dream or goal come to you, kind of just drift into the, um, you know, the edges of your mind rather than focusing on, hmm, what could my new dream be? You want it to come to you. When you get to an inhale, come on back up. If you're in cow face, release the legs. If you're in easy pose, you can stay there or hug the knees in. I want you to think about child's pose, balasana. That's where we're headed next, but I want you to set it up however you want it to be. So, um, you know, obviously if you have a lot of props, then um, you have a lot more choices to think about. So when you're ready, go ahead and head over into child's pose and make it the way you want it to be. When you're ready, we'll slowly make our way back up. 
Come back to a comfortable seated pose. You can use your props if you want to. And when you found the pose that's right for you, you're gonna close your eyes. One hand is gonna rest on your heart. One hand is gonna rest on your abdomen. And we're just gonna spend a moment working on the breath. What I want you to do is once we get started, you're going to empty the lungs completely. Then you're going to completely fill them to the count of four, and that's your counting in your head. I want you to hold the breath for four and I want you to exhale for eight. Go ahead and keep going until I tell you to stop. When you finish the count and the breath that you're on, you'll release the hands and let the breath be. Draw the shoulders up, take them back and down. Inhale both arms, exhale the hands to the heart. Keep the hands right there at the heart chakra, drop the shoulders and then drop the right ear toward the right shoulder. When you're ready, bring the head to center. Make sure the shoulders stay down and then drop the left ear toward the left shoulder. Bring the head back to center. Release the arms and then slide them behind you into yoga mudra. Palms together, fingers interlace, right? Straightening out the arms, but they're moving down towards the earth. When you get to your next exhale, let the arms go, shake them out and set up your space for Shavasana.
When you're comfortable, take a deep inhale, hold the breath, and cleansing exhale. And then allowing the body to grow heavy and the mind to grow clear. Settle yourself into corpse pose and you'll know when it's time to come back when you hear my voice.
bring your focus back to your breath. And know that as much as it's never too late to start something, it's also never too soon. And no matter what stage of life you're in, um, you always have the power to make choices, to change anything in your life that you're not happy with. So why live unsatisfied? Change it. Now take a deep breath in. Cleansing exhale. Bring some movement back into the hands and the feet. And then go ahead and stretch the arms overhead. Keep stretching, keep stretching. Give me a big inhale. And as you get to your exhale, just slide the hands down to rest at your heart. The light in me bows to the light in you. And when I'm in that place in me and you're in that place in you, then we become one. Namaste.